Yeah, the windshield. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. It seems like the windshield is always a little worse down here. Being right on the waterfront. You know? Yeah. Uh, it seems like it's always like between flat and it's cooler than it is anywhere else. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
got your IP six that you have needed unto you. That's what. All right, guys. So we were started on faith last week, and uh, we got pretty hit. It became uh, a distraction, and I think I mentioned to one person that uh, I guess I understand why some people build buildings. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you never know what God has in store for you. So uh, what I want to do is, uh, you know, I, I told you that faith, man, was not just believing that faith was obedience to God. Also. Yes. That if you believe in God, you would believe the words that he said to you. Yes. And that the proof of your belief in what he says to you would be your actions. Your obedience to him. Yes. Not some of your obedience to him, but your complete and total submission to him. I'll be honest with you. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. But to be truthful, I'm still not in 100% submission. Without doubt, I fall daily. I'm, yeah, right here, right here, man. I fail daily. I fail daily just because for the same reason that everybody else does. I care about me. I care about me. I care about my feelings. I care about what I need, what I think I need, what I wear, what I eat, what I drink, where I live. I care about these things, where I work, how much money I make. I care about these things. Why? Because it's what they're teaching you to care about. Yes? Yes, think about this. When you're homeless living on the street, what kind of person are you to the people in this society? You're a low life. Huh? You're a low life. Yeah, what does God say? You're rich. Huh? You're wealthy beyond all measure. But do we believe this? No. No, because we don't have a roof over our head. Because we don't have the right car. We don't have the right shoes. Yes. This is the reason why you like faith. Huh? It's exactly right. I'm telling you guys that your prayers be for spiritual things. Set your mind on the things above, not the things below. The world knows what it's doing, guys. It's doing its very best to twist you and lead you away from the things above. Away from the things above. These things don't even matter. They're passing away. There's nothing in this world that you can have that can't be taken from you in an instant. Nothing. Oh, oh. The devil comes to seek to rob you of your joy. Yes, that's exactly what he wants to take from you. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's your strength. That's how you resist him. That's the reason why he wants to take it from you. And if he puts your joy in the things of this world, you're going to be broke. You'll have no joy. You'll have no strength. You'll have no armor. But you put your joy in the things of love. You put your joy in the things of the Lord. And you'll be powerful. And you'll be overwhelmed with the spiritual armor of God. And Christ will definitely lead you. I'm telling you, man. Set your mind on the things above. Obey God. Huh? Listen. James chapter 1. Verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Now how is that possible? So much stuff in this world. How is it possible to live a life and not want anything? Joy! That's why. Joy! That's how. Set your mind on the things above. You'll want for nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that given to all men liberally and unbraided not and it shall be given to him it shall be given to him huh it's got a liar is god's word not true ask and it shall be given ask for the things that god wants you to have don't ask for the things of this world ask for wisdom and god will pour it out on you and do not be surprised when you're receiving this wisdom that you don't suffer huh because suffering cometh by wisdom. Think about this. Wisdom coming through suffering. You have to suffer in order to gain that which is heavenly. That which is wealthy. Wisdom is the most precious thing in this world. Believe it, brothers. Believe it. How can you gain wisdom without suffering? Do you think you should be treated better than Christ? Huh? Do you think you should be given more than what Christ was given? Huh? Christ suffered the death. Christ suffered a beating. Christ suffered for you and he suffered. Gained his wisdom and his obedience to his suffering. Do you think we should to be spoiled little brats running around here doing what we want to do saying no, we don't need to suffer? Christ suffered for you. And you better count your suffering as joy. 
because without it, you're broke. You're broke. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What's a double-minded man? Anybody know what a double-minded man is? That's a man that says one thing and does another. That's a man that thinks one way and does another. You can't be double-minded and expect to receive anything of God. If you say you love God, love God. If you don't say you love God, you're not going to have no love for God. You're going to have to start confessing at some point. Brothers. You're going to have to start saying it at some point. Because until you start saying it, you're never going to do it. I'm telling you now. Until you start confessing to those people around you, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You can't hope Jesus inherits some secret cell and think you're going to come up in this world. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to start confessing your love for Christ. You're going to have to start confessing God to other people around you. And you're going to have to start being held accountable for the words that you speak and the way that you think. Because until then, you're a double-minded man. And you'll have no way. You'll never be standing on the rock. You think you're standing on the rock, and what's going to happen is you're going to fall over the edge. And you're going to start burning in a place called the Lake of Fire. I'm telling you now, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't say one thing and do another. You can't think one way, say you think one way and act another. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. This year, let the brother of low degree rejoice. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. That's not what the world says, is it? Huh? No, the world says you're poor. You're homeless. You ain't got the right clothes. You ain't got the right shoes. You ain't got the right job. God says rejoice because you shall be exalted. I wonder why that is. I wonder why Christ said the poor you shall always have with you. Do you think that it is quite possible that God is separating you from this world and the things of this world and that you're suffering for a reason? Huh? Do you think that you could be called and chosen? Do you think you could be that generation that's a royal priesthood, a holy nation? Could it be possible? Rejoice! Rejoice! I don't hear no rejoicing! For the sun is no sooner risen, for the burning heat, but it withered the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grass of the fashion of it perisheth. So shall also the rich man fade away in his ways. You know, people in this world, they, they, they get things in this world, and they start thinking of themselves as wealthy. Yeah, that's right. They start thinking of themselves as wealthy because they got things in this world. And you know what? They got nothing. They got nothing. Because if they don't have the Lord in their heart, all the money in the world ain't going to bring them nothing. I'm telling you that now. And I'm sure most of you understand this. Most of you understand this. I'm sure many of you have had things in this world. Huh? Now where are you sitting today? Where are you sitting today even though you've had all these things? Huh? That's right. Brothers, the world is passing away. Huh? The grass is withering and the flowers fading. The things that shall not pass away are the spiritual things. Because they're of a kingdom that is everlasting. And that kingdom is someday going to be on this earth. And you're going to find yourself in this kingdom or out of this kingdom. Start acting like you're living in it, guys. You better start living in it today. Don't wait till that day. You better start living in it today. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is driven away of his own lust and enticed. This, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. What do you think about that? Huh? God is trying you. 
but he's not the one causing you to suffer. Every choice that you've ever made has been you. It's all been you. You've made every choice that you've ever made. Every bit of suffering that you've ever endured has been brought upon you. Why? Because of your lust. Because of your greed. Because of your desires. No man is tempted by anything unless he first desire it. I'll prove that to you over and over and over. Every single one of us sitting here has been some type of abuse and some type of substance. Every single one of us. And none of us has ever been tempted by any substance that we did not first want. Huh? That's exactly right. And that same goes with everything in this world. There's nothing in this world that's going to lead you astray unless you want it. Unless you want it, then it's going to lead you astray. All we got to do is look back at Eve. That's all we got to do is look back at Eve. Why did she eat from the tree? Was it because Satan told her a lie? Or was it because she wanted the fruit? That's exactly right. It's because she wanted the fruit. I don't know why she wanted the fruit. Maybe she wanted to be like that. Or maybe she wanted to be higher than Adam. I don't know why she wanted the fruit. It doesn't matter. The fact is that she wanted the fruit. And this is the reason why she was tempted. So that when you're tempted, huh? Do not say God is tempting you. Huh? You're tempted because this is what you desire. You want to flee temptation? You want to escape temptation? Remove the desire from yourself. And if you can't, get on your knees and ask somebody to help you. Get on your knees and ask somebody to help you. I cried out to the Lord for six months. Six months on my knees with tears in my eyes and shot in my nose, Lord. Please remove this desire from me, Lord, please. Six months. Every day. Day in and day out, all day long, every time I find myself alone, I'm on my face. It didn't happen right away. It didn't happen right away. And I don't know what. I'm not God. I can't explain those things to you. I'm not all knowing. I just know that when you pray for the Lord to remove a temptation from you, to remove a desire from you so that you won't be tempted, the moment will come when you are tried. The moment will come when you're a child. And the proof is going to be in whether you're not you fall into the temptation. And I've explained it to you. The man put it in my hand and I threw it down. It was only because God gave me the power. Jesus Christ gave me the power to overcome. And the same will happen for you if you so desire it. If you so desire it. But if all you're worried about is the things of this world, you're not going to have nothing. You're not going to have nothing, guys. Listen to me. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variable, neither shadow of truth. Of his own will began uh, he us with the word of truth, that we should be the kind of the first fruits of his creatures. Christ is called the first fruits. Christ is the first person to be resurrected from the dead. Yes, it's the gift of eternal life. That's exactly right. There were two other men that did not taste that food, Enoch and Elijah. Yes, they were not resurrected. They were not some kind of first fruits. And it's quite possible that those two men will come back someday. Yes, none of us know who the two witnesses will be. But Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. Yes, and God created us for this very thing. This very thing He created us to bring us to eternal life. But first, we got to live. First, we got to endure. So that we can be resurrected. And he did this to us. He made us out the word of truth. Which is Jesus Christ is the word of truth, guys. Without the word of truth, you're not going to get anywhere. And I know I've heard it I've, ever since I began. Ever since I've been speaking the name of the word of the Lord. Everybody has criticized me. Everybody has pointed their finger at me for the words that I say. And I've never said anything that doesn't come out of this book. Never have I said anything that comes out of this book, brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you now, there's a reason. And it's because I'm fearful for my soul. It's I'm fearful for my salvation. And I'll never bring a word that's not the word of God. It's just that simple. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what people think about what I say. So long as what I say is what God says. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to make it colorful. I'm not trying to put sugar on it. I'm not trying to make it taste good. I wanted to save your soul. And if it doesn't go get me, the truth is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You can't expect somebody to succeed in anything unless you tell them the truth. If you don't train them up in the right way, they'll never be a success. 
I'm a disciple, disciple, and disciples to disciple more disciples. Christ said, Go ye among all nations, make ye disciples of all all nations. And I'm telling you now, that's each and every one of your job. If you don't know it today, you do. And I'll tell you what, next week I'll show you how to do it. Next week I'll show you how to do it, okay? I promise you. Next week we'll show you that you got a ministry. Next week we'll show you that you got a ministry. It's time to start getting serious about it. I suggest readings to you every week. Every week I suggest readings to you. And what I'm asking is, which of you read? Which of you read what I'm suggesting to you? It's time to get serious. Or the truth. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Why do you reckon that is? Why do you reckon we should be swift to hear? What did I say earlier? Faith comes by the hearing. And that hearing must be by the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know what? People get angry. Especially when you're telling the truth. Huh? Especially when you're telling the truth. Why do you think that is? Because the truth hurts. When you find yourself on the wrong side of truth, it hurts. Yes. And what's the first thing they want to do? They want to get mad. And what happens when you get mad? It's like putting blinders on your face. You can't see nothing. This is the reason why you must be slow to wrath. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Especially when the truth is being spoken to you. Especially when the truth is being spoken to you, girls. I don't know what you're thinking about when it goes on down here. I'm not trying to impress nobody, guys. I'm not trying to be somebody that I'm not. I'm simply trying to be a man who will not give up. Who will not give up on my Lord. That's all that I am. I'm nothing more than that. And anything else that you think that might seem good about me, about this meeting down here, is all God. Listen. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This man should be blessed in his deed. You can't just be a hearer, guys. And hey, I'm, I'm so thankful that every one of you have come today to hear. Trust me, I really am. Because faith can come no other way except by the hearing. And you've come today for the purpose of the hearing. And now what I'm telling you is if you don't go with the purpose of doing what it is that you have heard, you're not going to have any success. It's not just about you. It must be about you in the beginning. But it's not about you. It's about every single person you'll ever meet. It's about every single person you'll ever speak a word to. Guys, I'm telling you now, God has a plan, man. He has created this universe. He is the orchestrator of every single thing. And he has a plan, man. And you are a part of his plan. Whether you know that or not, you are a part of his plan. You might not know him, you might not love him, you might not worship him, you might not pray to him, but you are a part of his plan, and you're doing exactly what it is he wants you to be doing. Brothers, you're here today because he wants you to be praising his name. He wants you to be spreading his word. This is the reason why he has directed your steps here. There's no doubt, because this is what he's telling you. This is what he's telling you. Don't just be here, guys. Tell me now. Don't just be a hero. Listen. Chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man and vile raiment, and ye have respect to him, 
that weareth the rich clothing and say it to him, sit here in a good place. And you say to the poor person, stand over there or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you out before the judgment seat. Do not they blaspheme that worship thy name, be ye which are called. If you fulfill the royal law, you should love your brother as yourself. <laughs> you know, we talked about this. We covered this in, uh, uh, in what love is, didn't we? We covered that in what love is about being a respecter of persons. Yes, about a man that says he loves God, but has hate in his heart for any one of his brethren. He has not the love of God within him, and he's a liar. And no liar shall pass through the gates of heaven. We used the Joe mode for an example, didn't we? That was the example that we used because it was the most lowest grotesque thing that I can think of. That every single person in this world says that they hate. This is the reason why the example was made. And I told you that you can hate the sin, but you've got to love the man. Because you don't know who God is sending to you. You don't know who's going to be the repentant man that changes ways. You don't know these things. But God does. God does know these things. Man. And it's okay to be offended by what it is that people do. It most certainly is. There's a lot of things I'm offended by. And yet I do not show partiality to those who make do these deeds and things that do not do these deeds. Which one of you have I ever turned away from down here? Which one of you have I ever chose not to speak to? Who have I chose not to shake hands with or hug next? Anybody that's wanted in this guy. I don't care what you've done. I don't even ask you what you've done. It ain't about what you've done. It's about where you're going. And if you weren't concerned about where you was going, you wouldn't be standing down here in front of me. You wouldn't be standing down here in front of me and that gives me hope, brothers. That gives me hope. I'm telling you now, you can't be a respecter of persons, whether they be poor or whether they be wealthy. You cannot be. Because if you are, you'll find that you're going to miss what God has sent to you. Huh? You're going to miss your visitation just like the Jews missed Christ when he came. Because they were expecting some other person. They were looking for some other kind of person. They wasn't looking for a lowly carpenter. They was looking for a glorious king that come from above. And they missed it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye have respect to persons, ye can consume and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Think about that. You know, Christ gave us two commandments and told us that our whole salvation hangs on these two commandments. That we went over that. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love thy neighbor as thyself. And that if you could do these two things, you would fulfill the whole entire law. Man. Yes. But if you slip at any one point of your love, you're going to be guilty of the whole entire law. The whole law, man. And there comes among you one person. One person whom you fail to show this love to is the same as breaking the law, even though you may not have sinned out with you. Yes. Why is that? Because loving God is loving those people around you. Uh, we learned that. First John chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. That loving God was loving those people around you, loving your brethren, and keeping God's commandments. Yes, yes. If you have that love in your heart, you shall escape judgment. But if you should slip, if you should fail, and any one point of this love, it's going to be the same as you failing in the law, guys. And guess what? Guess what happens to those people who fail the law? Death. 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 Death is the curse of the law. Yes, you want to escape things first? You better love them. You better love those people around you. And I'm telling you, man, loving somebody and liking somebody are two totally different things. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to kick it and hang out with somebody because Jesus says to love. You understand? No, that's not what love is. Love is giving when someone asks you. You understand what I mean? Giving without the expectation of return. Whether it be clothing, whether it be food, whether it be money out of your pocket, it don't matter what it is, you can't turn away. Why? Because that's love. That's love. Despite the low life this person may have been, despite the terrible things that they may have done, 
and not turn away. And the moment that you do this, and the moment that you do this, the moment that you are a respecter of person or deed, you're going to fail. And that failure will grow in you, and it will create a greater person within you. Trust me. And now all comes up. You can't do it. Listen here. Last week I told you. Last week I told you that faith was obedience. It wasn't just believing God or believing in God, but it was believing God. And the proof of your belief of God was your obedience to God and to God's word. That's what I told you. I'm going to read this to you. This is uh, chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? But faith is Satan. How many people do you know or have you heard that say that? Faith will save you. Only faith. You can't enter the kingdom of heaven by works. No man shall be saved by works. Only by faith. And I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today, huh, that that is not the case. Excuse me. I'm not telling you. James is telling you. God is telling you. Listen. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and what are you saying to them? Depart in peace. Be ye warned and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Where is the love of that? Huh? Where is the love of saying, oh, I'll pray for you, brother. Huh? Yes, I'll pray for you. And go on about your way, knowing that you could have gave something to this person that you see clearly that they need. Clearly. <coughs> Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Why is that? You know, we're all hustlers out here, ain't we? Yeah, aren't we? Ain't that what we've done most all of our whole entire life? Yeah, okay. So we're pretty understanding that we know lots of people can say lots of things and not mean a word of it. Yeah, yeah. Can you understand why it is faith without works is dead? What's that? Actions speak louder than words? This is that, this is that what it said? Yes. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Ye a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. I say, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You know what? Uh, one of the things that faith is, hope, man. Yes, hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yes, and the evidence of things not seen. That's what we said. It's exactly what we said. And I'm telling you, the evidence of things not seen. No man can see within you. No man can see in your heart or your mind. But what they can see is your works. And I'm telling you now, they can know what you hope for by your works. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? If you're out here being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only, and someone can save your faith, uh, they're going to listen to you. They're going to listen to you. And you're going to have some fruit. Because I'm telling you guys, when you come before the master of harvest and you ain't got no fruit in your basket, you ain't going to get paid. What do you think about that? Huh? What do you think about that? You come up there with an empty basket, oh Lord, I worked, I worked. Well, where's your fruit? you work for iniquity, I know you not. Laziness will not be rewarded, yes. I have to tell you that. And you know, there's a reason why we gotta work in this world. There's a reason why God cursed mankind to live by the sweat of their brow. Yeah, there sure is. There sure is. Because works will be rewarded on that day with the crown of life. There's four other crowns too. Maybe someday we'll go over those crowns. But know this, faith without works is dead. And you can show people your faith by your works. Listen. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But when thou know, O faith man, that faith without works is dead. What do you think about that? Didn't I tell you last week that faith was not just believing? Didn't I say that? Yes. Can you see why faith is not just believing? Huh? Even the demons believe in God. Why wouldn't they? They came from his presence. They were right there in front of him and he cast them out. They believe he exists. It's not enough to just believe in his existence, guys. It's not. If you think that you're going to make it just because you believe in his existence, if you think just because some slick preacher in a suit that gets paid $150,000 a year say you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven because you believe, 
you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. Faith without works is dead. I gave you the example of Abraham. Now listen. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? We, he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Faith is made perfect by your works, yes. Why? Because other people can see your works. To know that your faith is genuine. To listen to you. To hear you. To believe you. You know, in the early days when the disciples first started taking this message to the world, they had power, man. They could raise the dead. They could heal blindness and leprosy. There was all manner of miracles that they could work. And it was because of these miracles that people believed the word that they said was true because there was no Bible for them to check them by. There was no fact check. You understand what I'm saying? It was by these miracles that they believed. Yes. But today, today it's a little different than that. Today it's much, much harder. This is the reason why Christ said greater works than these say ye do. Greater works than these say ye do. The work is bringing people to faith, guys. That's the work. The miracle is not the work. None of us are going to work these miracles. And I don't know, maybe someday the Spirit will be pulled back to balance when the times draw to an end. It's quite possible the Word says that this is true. But today, today people are going to believe because of your deeds. Because of what they see you doing. The way you talk. The speech that you present to them. Whether it be idle or whether it be full of grace and understanding. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. You better put your idle speech away from you. You better put the idle speech away from you. If you're going to hope to have some fruit in your basket, you better put the idle speech away from you. Faith of that works is dead. Abraham was justified, considered righteous because of his works. Because his works proved that he believed what God said. Because he obeyed what God said to do. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that if you believe God, if you believe God, you better start cleaning some of this out of yourself, man. You better start putting some of these lies away from you. No, you need to best put all these lies away from you. You need to put all your theft away from you. You need to put all your lusts and adulteries and shacking up and every other thing that you do away from you. You better pray the Spirit come upon you and cleanse you of unrighteousness, guys. But that's not going to happen until you start confessing. Until you start confessing. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Don't you know? Don't you know that in our disobedience we are God's enemies? Did you know that? When we're disobedient, we're the enemy of God. And I don't know about you guys, but I think it's a pretty fearful thing. I think it's a pretty fearful thing to be in the hands of the living God as his enemy. Huh? The only person that can separate the spirit from the body. The only person that can cast your soul into a place called the lake of fire. I think that's a fearful thing. Better be God's friend. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I don't know if you guys know the story of Rahab. When the children of Israel were coming to the land of Canaan, yeah, Moses led them. When they got to the river Jordan, and Moses sent Joshua and Gideon over the river to scout the area out. Yeah, and there were some other people that went with them too. And when they came back to give Moses the report, everybody except Joshua and Gideon was all scared. They were all scared about these people. And they didn't have faith that God was going to lead them to victory. That they might receive the land that God had promised them. And so God sent them back out in the desert. For 38 more years they wandered in the desert because of their unbelief. Yes, but when they came back, when they came back, Joshua and Gideon was leading them. Yes, and they went over and they searched out the city of Jericho. And the raven, they had the holy. When they were in the city, and they was told to the people in the city that there were spies in the city. Rahab the harlot led Joshua and Gideon out the window of her room, down the wall by a rope. 
And because she believed, she believed the words that they spoke, that was spoke to them by God. You see what I'm saying? She didn't even hear these words from God. She heard these words from another person who had heard these words from God. Just as you sit here today, hearing these words from another person who heard these words from God. Do you understand? Yes, it is possible, brother. You must believe the word of God. And you can't take my word for it. I've told you that over and over and over. You're going to have to get in here and find it out for yourself. How can you expect to have a relationship with the word of God who is Jesus Christ if you don't have a relationship with the word of God? Let me give you an example. I think we need an example of this. All you men... When you was younger, teenagers in school, you saw a girl, what was the first thing you did? What was the first thing you did if you thought she was cool or cute or somebody suspect? If you wanted to get to know her? You asked about her, didn't you? You asked the people that you knew if they knew her, didn't you? Yeah. Or maybe somebody did. Or maybe somebody had heard some things about her. Yeah. And you investigated a little more. Until finally you went to her yourself. And you spoke to her. Yes. Yes, this is exactly what you do. This is exactly what you're doing today, guys. This is exactly what you're doing today. You have came to somebody who knows Jesus Christ to tell you about Jesus Christ. Uh, and those of you who believe what you hear will go to Jesus Christ yourself and have a little talk with Jesus. That's what I'm telling you. If you don't, you're not going to make it, guys. I'm telling you now. I've heard lots of excuses. I've heard all kinds of people say, oh, I can't understand that, or I can't read. I've heard all kinds of excuses, man. And I'm telling you what, the day you're standing before him, no excuse is gonna stand. There's gonna be no excuse that's gonna give you a free pass. You better do what you told him. I'm just saying, I'm not telling you, you gotta do anything. I'm telling you what the Word of God is telling you. Yes, you better get in there and you better find it out. You better find it out. Real quickly, I want to say something about this idle speech. Since it is part of James, I was only going to read the first couple of chapters here, chapter 1 and 2. But chapter 3 is about controlling the tongue. And I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to preach on it. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn them about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great in size, are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about by a very small hill, whithersoever the governor listen. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and most of great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and birds, and serpents, and the things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curses we men, which are made after the simplitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olives or vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. You got to make a man of this. You have to make a man of it. Okay, yeah, you know. What kind of man are you going to be? And your mouth is going to have to be a reflection of this. Yes. Your mouth is going to have to be a reflection of this. Whether you be a hearer of the word or a doer of the word, your mouth will be the reflection of this. And as a matter of fact, it will begin with your speech. This is the beginning of it right there. He said, no man can tame the tongue, and this is true. Only God above can tame the tongue, and you need to go to him to understand how to tame the tongue. You understand what I'm saying? The way to tame the tongue is to speak the word of God. And that's it. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. It's just that simple, guys. Ponder and meditate on the word of God often. 
read the word of God. Speak the word of God often. You understand what I'm saying? Be trained up in this way. Make it a habit. Let it become the focus of your life. Don't be led astray from this path. I'm telling you. If you allow yourself to be led away from this path, this is the narrow path that leads to salvation. It is only the other one again, please. And the reason it's a narrow path is because it's clear cut. It's black and white. It's very genuine. There is no metaphors. There is no euphemisms. There is no translations. There's only one truth. It's just that simple. And any man who thinks otherwise is a man who complicates the word of God. It's a man who wants to have a different understanding, not because he loves God, but because he loves himself. Make no mistake. There are many in the world who trust the word of God. There are many interpretations, as it were. Yes. And I'm telling you now, there can only be one interpretation, guys. There's only one truth. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what deed you're around. There's only ever one truth. And there can only ever be one truth. And it's time that you begin speaking this one truth. Because without it, brothers, without it, you're not going to have any truth. You're not. I'm going to suggest another reading for you. Matthew 25. We're going to go over some of that next week. We're going to learn about our ministry, guys. Huh? We're going to learn what kind of work it is that we got to be out here doing. Because we're men. We're sons of God. And it's time that we begin acting like it. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Everybody wants some prayer? I just want to talk about something they've read. Anybody have any questions about anything that they've read? I'm here for you, man. Huh? There's a few other folks here, too. Yeah? All right. Let's close the prayer. Father, we come before you, Father, thankfulness, gratitude in my heart, Father, upon your spirit out of us this day, Lord, for moving upon us, Father, for bringing the truth and understanding to us, Lord, for bringing the passion of your love, Lord, the fire and the fury of your love upon us, Lord. Father, I pray that this word that's planted today, Lord, that it be water, Lord. However you see fit for it to be water, Lord, whether it's through the eyes of reading, Father, whether it's through the ears of hearing, Lord, whether it's through the love of compassion, Father, or whether it be through fear, Lord, I pray that it be water, and that it produce fruit, Father. Father, we give thanks. We give thanks for the love of God with you and your presence, Lord. Father, we pray that you never leave us, Father, that you always continue to guide us, Lord. Praise the name of the mighty King Jesus Christ. Amen.